three. A third feature of Building 7's collapse would need to be classified as a miracle if we accept the view that the building was brought down by fire. This is the fact that the building came down in absolute freefall for over two seconds. Although the 9-11 Truth Movement has long been pointing out that this building descended at the same rate as a free-falling object, at least virtually so, NIST had long denied this. As late as August 2008, when NIST issued its uh, report on Building 7 in the form of a draft for public comment, it claimed that the time it took for the floors to come down was approximately 40% longer than the computed freefall time. This, NIST added, was consistent with physical principles, meaning consistent with uh, the laws of physics. As this statement implied, any assertion that the building did come down in free fall would not be consistent with basic laws of physics, assuming, of course, that explosives were not used. Sean Sunder, who was in charge of NIST's World Trade Center reports, explained why. The fact that Building 7 came down much slower than freefall, Sunder said, is not at all unusual because there was structural resistance that was provided. And you had a sequence of structural failures that had to take place. Everything was not instantaneous. However, Sunders' claim was challenged by physicist David Chandler. Sunders' 40% longer claim, Chandler said, contradicted a publicly visible, easily measurable quantity. Chandler then provided a video on the internet showing that by measuring this publicly visible quantity, anyone understanding elementary physics could see that for about two and a half seconds, the acceleration of the building is indistinguishable from freefall. Given this usual behavior, we might have expected it simply to ignore Chandler's challenge. But in his final report, NIST admitted freefall. Dividing the building's descent into three stages, NIST described the second phase as a free fall descent over approximately eight stories at gravitational acceleration for approximately 2.25 seconds, two and a quarter seconds. NIST thereby accepted Chandler's position, except for stating that the time in which the building was in free fall was only 2.25 rather than 2.5, rather than two and a quarter, rather than two and a half seconds. Trivial difference. NIST thereby affirmed, without explicitly admitting it, that if no explosives were used, the descent of Building 7 was inconsistent with the principles of physics. Chandler explained why saying free fall can only be achieved if there is zero resistance to the, the motion. motion. The top floor of Building 7 would have encountered tremendous resistance from the steel structure of the lower 46 floors, unless that structure had been removed by explosives. Sean Sunder himself, assuming that explosives were not used, had said in August that a free fall descent of Building 7 would have been impossible because a free-falling object would be one that has no structural components below it to offer resistance. But in November, NIST stated in its final report exactly what Sunder had explained to be impossible. While continuing to insist that no explosives were used, NIST now stated that Building 7 came down in freefall for over two 
seconds. And in making that change, uh, NIST no longer used the language, and this is consistent with physical principles. That phrase they had used repeatedly in the preliminary report, they canceled every one of those. So they didn't, they didn't uh, explicitly assert that uh, what they were saying was consistent with uh, physics. So they ex implicitly admitted that what they're now saying is inconsistent, uh, that free fall without explosives is inconsistent with physics. So therefore, NIST implicitly declared that a miracle had happened. <laughs>